shit again. <laughs> All right, we're I, back. We're back up. <laughs> can I say shit now? <laughs> yeah. I've been up this whole time. What are you talking about? Yeah. TMI. Came, you did say something about hey, four hours exactly. earlier, right? Yeah. So we were talking about. Uh, I think we're going in the last phase of war, right? Um, we're doing the questions have, now. Oh, questions. I thought we covered war. Right, I, got a question. I did not have a sex change. Yeah, what is that? We didn't get to that yet. One of the questions is, was it answered that a guild can be simultaneously sieging and besieging? Yeah, we just answered that. Right. You said on, on uh, normal it server, it's one of I'm sorry. What was that? I, I could barely hear you. Can you hear me now? You're still you sound no. real far away. How about now? Yes. There you go. There, there you okay. go. It uh, was where to go. Can a city double up or triple up on city walls and perimeter defenses? Um, I think there's going to be a limited uh, amount of automated defenses. I could be wrong. We could make it unlimited and just make it cost prohibitive. Um, but there will probably be a limit on the amount of stuff. Uh, as far as doubling and tripling up on walls, I'm not sure if we're going to allow people to do that. And really, I'm not sure if you'd, why you'd want to. Um, the primary structure that they need to get through to get into your city is the city grid. That's going to be the, the prohibitive uh, part of the fight that's going to be the longer part for the attackers to get through, I believe. So the, the city walls aren't going to be like some huge fortress structure uh, that they have to get through before they can get to you. They're going to give you a, a, a moment's notice. They're going to give you a little bit of time, but they're not going to give you enough to, I think, uh, it give a reason to have two to three sets of walls. Okay. That's it on Twitch for now. Okay. I think in the build video, they gave a pretty good representation of what a wall would look like. It looks more like what you would consider a temporary barrier in a lot of uh, instance area. You know, it, it looks very thin with some barbed wire on top. We've got Is that some pretty really... representation? Um, we've got... I'm trying to think of all the art that I've seen as far as walls go. I've seen some walls that I would not want to have to bust through. And I've also seen ones that we have art for that I, I look like it really looks like you just like kind of push it and it would fall down. So um, I'm not sure how we're going to how we're going to do that hit point wise. If the the scrappy looking walls are going to be, you know, cheap knockoffs, you know, one kick and they're down. Or if it's just going to be a basic... Um, uh, a basic uh, a wall has X hit points and you can style however you want uh, that's sort of going to be one of those things that they're going to have to decide on whether or not they want the art to be realistic in uh, versus hit points or if they're going to say okay well you can style it however you want and it's going to have X hit points gotcha mm, any more questions in uh, Twitch Twitter we've got one on Twitter we never got to but it's, a, it's kind of just a general PvP question I'll give it a shot. All right. It says, how can you be sure there will be balance in PvP between action mode combat and RPG mode combat? Well, actually, that's one of the ones that I can answer because the, the devs have already, like, repeated that, like, 50 times on the boards. So, um, basically, RPG mode and action mode, um, while action mode looks like an FPS or a TPS, um, you can go first person or third person with it. Um, it's not a true shooter. It's not like a Twitch combat thing. Um it uses, it's, it's sort of a sim, a simulated FPS or TPS. So it still uses the hit rolls and things of that nature, just like RPG mode uses. It just gives you sort of a different view for it. Um, so we're not going to see aimbots because aimbots aren't going to do you any good. Um, RPG mode isn't going to have a huge advantage over it because you still do have the, the system trying to say, okay, well, this is where you were shooting at and this is who's standing there, so obviously this is who you were targeting. Um, and, and the system does that in an action mode. So even though you don't have the sticky targeting um, where you have the cute little ring around their feet like you do in RPG mode, you still do sort of have the system going, okay, well, this is who you're aiming at, so this is who you hit. Um, 
So it, it's there's not going to be an advantage over one side over the other, and there isn't there also isn't going to be a lot of advantage um, to trying to create aim bots or anything of that nature to sort of scam the system out because they're just not going to be useful for you. I think that's it for questions right now on here. Okay. Uh, if you guys if you guys got questions, uh, ask them now because if not, it's uh, most likely going to be the end of the show. Actually, I got one more real quick. Going back to sieging, are there okay. any chance to have your city raided by NPC groups or anything like that? Um, we do have the ability for dens to spawn, and if you don't take care of those, they may impact your city. Um, they're almost beneficial in a way, even though it can have a negative impact on on trade or on your NPCs and things, um, or even on your 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 city members if they walk outside and there's you know three mini bosses roaming outside the door, they're going to get their face owned. But um, it gives you something right there, some content that's right there and available for you to do right beside your city. Um, but as far as um, NPCs or mobs being able to come and destroy your stuff, I don't think that we're going to do something like that uh, because. All it's going to take is is that one time where, you know, three quarters of your people are gone because it's spring break or because it's Christmas holidays and you have a, a family guild and everybody's going to be busy and then there's not going to be enough to all of a sudden take care of it. And it's not really fair for um, for a guild to lose the city that they've built like that just because to, to uh, content, to, you know, PVE. Uh, so I don't think we're going to see anything like that uh destroy cities but yeah it can pop up by your city and it can have an effect on you uh in 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 several different ways but uh destroy your entire city i'm i'm gonna say probably not we have a few more questions uh could you possibly tell us the player cap for guilds and nations um we're still actually debating uh numbers for that so it's really hard for me to to give you a number that we don't we don't officially have at this point uh if we do put a cap it's going to be a fairly high cap uh it will be there just sort of to keep uh keep giant mega zergs from from being in a single guild uh but i for most guilds i wouldn't even worry about having a cap because you're probably not going to reach any cap that we do put Okay. And so you don't want swarms in your game, huh? Um, well, you know, normal server-wise, we need to keep the server available for people who don't want to play in that giant hardcore swarm environment. Um, hardcore-wise, I believe that the people that are going to play on the hardcore server should be able to set aside differences, and if a swarm does come that threatens the server, um, stand up and stand together to stop it. Um, that's more the mindset you would have with hardcore PvPers. Uh, so normal server-wise, I think we're going to try to discourage that type of hardcore gameplay on the normal server. But on the hardcore server, I, I think it's going to be one of those, well, you don't like what they're doing, guys, band together, stop it, you know, police yourselves. Um, hopefully that answered the question there. Um, are server story arcs being discussed as server events? Um. I don't know that we're going to have separate server story arcs because we're really looking at having like two servers. Um, but I would love to do live events uh, personally, and, and I will totally, if they let me, take take control of the event man uh, as, as an event manager and, and do those myself. Uh, I would love to do that, and I would love to be able to progress forward with lore and things as we move forward in the game. Um, besides just little random events, actually do lore events and things. I, I totally want to do that. Uh, guaranteed, absolutely not at this point. It's, we're going to have to see how things go as we as we move forward into beta and on to release. Uh, but if I get any say in the matter, I'm totally doing server events. Shadowbane had them, and they really the the future the FC events that Shadowbane did um, had a lasting impression on me as a gamer, and I would like to sort of pay it forward. And um, the question I figured would come up is um, the expected release date question. <laughs> um. We don't have a, an expected release date. What we have is an estimation of when we're going to be ready. Uh, that hasn't changed officially from what we've said before. Uh, it was recently reiterated on the boards by JC. It's in the Ask the Devs thread right there for everyone to read. Um, when we have a solid date, 
to give, what that means is we know it's going to be ready. We're not going to release this game until we are certain that it is actually ready to be released in a state in which that we are comfortable with everyone saying, okay, this is a release version. And until we're comfortable with that, we're not going to be able to say, oh, we're going to release on X date because it's not going to, uh, it, it's just not going to happen like that it, until we, we know for sure. Um, we did get a good question for you. How will respawning work during the siege? Will defenders be able to spawn in their own city? And if so, will a Zerg be needed on the attacker side or how will it be balanced? Um, defenders should be able to spawn in their own city. Uh, a, a smart group of attackers is definitely going to target the cloning center first to stop that from occurring uh, once they're able to get into the city. So yes, the, the defenders sort of do have a leg up uh, because they're going to spawn right back in their city and they're going to be safe and they're going to have time to, to rally and stuff, whereas the attackers being out there in the open, they don't have anything but their camp. Um, it's going to be a little more difficult for them to, to re-rally when, when they've been beaten back. Um, but we are looking at at that issue of, you know, one and done if the attackers can't respawn. So I, I would expect to see them respawning in their siege camp. Um, exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, I'm a proponent of, of mobile cloning facilities. I believe it might just be sort of built into the siege camp, however. Um, so the attackers would then spawn there at the siege camp. Um so they would be able to get back into the battle as well. But they're not going to have the same chance to rally up uh, like the defenders will because they're going to be out in the open and the defenders are going to spawn back in their city into safety. Now, when you're looking at the attackers attacking a city, what's the distance you're looking at as far as having to close to get to the city? I'm assuming you're not going to drop a siege camp five feet from the city you're attacking. But what is the... The range is there a set range or is it where you feel strategically is best that you're going to be able to drop that camp to hit a city um whether or not it's going to be static or what it's going to be completely customizable not sure yet we're going to have to look at at one what's going to be the most sensible when it comes to uh to sieging after we get some metrics involved i would say we're probably going to let you drop it in a range of an area um, because that's, you know, strategic positioning of a siege camp can be the difference between winning and losing. Uh, at least I know it could be in Shadowbane. Smart placement was sometimes the, the difference between win winning and losing. Uh, but that's going to have to wait and see exactly how that's going to be handled until, um, until we have some, some testing metrics and stuff that we can look at and say, okay, you know, we need to give them a range that's X meters or this one static point is the only thing in the entire game that makes sense, so this is where it's going to go. And that makes, you know, it's going to depend on, on, the, on the metrics and feedback from testers. You Do you have a questions? theoretical number of uh, players that can be on each side of the siege yet, or is that going to be done again during playtest? Um... A theoretical set of numbers, like I, I Shadowbane ten years ago, I remember like two hundred v two hundred. So, I, and uh, that that was a slideshow. Uh, so I mean, that was painful. But I, I would like us to be able to handle things like that. A lot of this going to depend on the servers and um, optimization. Uh, but we're definitely going to look at how far we can push it uh, when it comes to testing to see what what's going to stay stable. I, I'd love it to stay stable all the way up to 200 v 200, but again, it's one of those things of, of server architecture and programming and things that are totally out of my hands. So, uh, my hopes are that that we can manage, but um, it, we're going to have to actually test it out because you know we can say, oh, we expect it to do a thousand versus a thousand, and metaphor, you can, you know, you're you're the reason I just said that. Um, but you know, until we test it out, us saying it doesn't mean anything because we have to test it out and we have to prove that we can. So now you that you said metaphor is in the channel, tell uh, him yeah, I expect my tattoo. Uh, I, you know, he's in there. I'm sure he can hear you. Yeah, you know, metaphor is not the coder. He's the art director there. That's that's the repopulation's art director there in chat. Metaphor. Uh, but I, I would love to actually see him give you the tattoo because that would be hilarious. He did that once to a tester who complained about uh, the male uh, rear anatomy being too flat. Um, the guy ended up with a, uh, a big heart tattoo with his name on his own butt. So that was that was pretty amusing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, any uh, last questions from you, you guys? Tour? We got two more, actually. All right. All right. Yep. Black Angelo is asking, I won't bring up the game, but it's pretty much if you're attacking a city, how do you take it or what's the end game to take that city? Other games have used professions that you have to do certain things. Uh, is it just you get to the center, blow something up? What's the dynamics for that? Take the city and win. Um, to actually, to to kill the city, you have to destroy the, the control center, I believe is what we're going with there. Um, to capture a city, uh, we're still looking at that. I mean, we may tie it into like hacking where you have to sort of hack the control center. Uh, we may have it tied to crafting in a way where you have to craft something that actually does that job for you. Um, but there's definitely going to be sort of a, a cast time mm -hmm. involved. We're still debating exactly how long that's going to be. Um, but you know, we may tie that into a profession. We may tie it into just crafting where you need to have this thing on you in order to capture. Um, it's going to depend again on on, on testing feedback and uh, and testers feedback and metrics and things as we as we go through. I would love to tie it to a skill. I, I'm a big proponent of make everybody work for it, but you know we have to keep sieging available um, to players who can't do you know 90 hours a week of gameplay. So um, we'll have to see what we're what we're actually going to do there. One of the questions was about uh, if you look at like Lord of the Rings and all that, where they have actual siege towers where you can, instead of having to breach a wall, go over it. Is there going to be something like that as far as siege assets? Um, I jokingly said I'd love to have sort of the ninja grappling hook, but I don't think we're going to see anything quite like that. Um, siege towers, probably not. We're talking high tech. I mean, if they really want to get somebody over there, um, they would fly something over and drop them in. Um, now, if that's going to be an option, I have no earthly idea. I haven't seen any ability that would allow you to do something along those lines. Um, I haven't heard anything about a siege vehicle that would allow you to sort of deposit people on the other side of a, of a city wall. Uh, but it's a possibility, you know, if, if it ends up... Um, uh, if it ends up being necessary, uh, or if it ends up being all good mechanics-wise, you know, we may see something like that occur. But um, at this point, I, I don't think it's in the plans. Like it, unless I've missed something. Somebody wants to put back. Oh, here we go. Can you shoot someone out of a cannon? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think we have those kinds of cannons. You know, I, I think. <laughs> I think if you uh, you got yourself inside of a cannon, the the artillery stuff that I've seen, if you got yourself inside of a cannon, it's only a, a part of your body, and they're all energy based. So uh, I'm gonna say that's not gonna end well for you. This is actually an excellent question. Uh, it's a bad color, so I can't. Uh, Matica. I will know. city names show up on the world map? And if so, will a siege and or its phase be distinguishable on the world map by other players? Um, I don't know if city names are going to show up on the world map or not. Um, that's more of a design question than I haven't even asked before. Um, it's a good question though, but as far as um, siege phases and things being distinguishable from the world map, I, I want to say that it's not really everybody's business if you're getting sieged. So I, I can't foresee that, but I mean I could be wrong. They could decide to make it everybody's business, um, but I, I, I don't see why they would. You know, a city being sieged, if you announce it to everybody, now you're asking for Bane Crashers, or I'm sorry, Siege Crashers. Banes were back in Shadow Bane, I'm sorry. Um, if you know you're asking for Siege Crashers, uh, I think we're going to see enough of that that we don't need to sort of advertise for them. It looks like the last one I see is if someone's attacking us and we know that there's absolutely no way that we can uh, win, instead of surrendering the city to them, we're losing the resources. Can you just sack the city and walk away from it? Um, I would say if you know you can't win and you know they're going to take it, why not say, okay, you know what, we'll surrender it to you, but give us credits for it. Give us something for it to save you the time and the rest of your resources and stuff. I think that would be a better method of going about it than trying to ruin it. But if it comes down to it, um... I would say you probably will be able to sort of just start deleting stuff uh, before they're able to get in there. But you know, once they sort of 
but you know kill you guys and bust you out of it you probably won't be able to delete anything uh from outside of your city but you know, if you had the mayor there maybe maybe you could start deleting city buildings and things so they couldn't have them but i think there are better diplomatic answers to that problem than let's ruin it so they can't have it intact you know it, it's much better to try to go to them and say hey you know what we'll we'll stand here we'll help you take it we'll do whatever we need to do just you know throw us a bone here you know help you know pay us something work with us let's hammer out a treaty something you know diplomat diplomacy is always better than than stomping off angry i would actually take the opposite tack to make sure that somebody can't start instantly deleting everything once they know that it's almost ready to be taken because some people vindictive sobs and will just start deleting over and over and over and over and over and over again so you get them. so that may want to be taken into account as well well yeah it's possible that we won't allow anything to be but given the, the fact that you can repair things and such i would imagine the option to remove them may may be available uh, it may turn out that that's not a good answer and we may not have that available but i haven't heard anything yet to suggest that we wouldn't have that option available but again you know it I really I understand the idea of oh if they're gonna take it I'm gonna make sure they don't really even want it but at the same time if you can get something out of it and you know they're gonna take it anyway uh, why throw the tantrum when I got something out of it right but a lot of places that I guess what I'm saying is if it's the very end and I know I'm gonna lose it and they know they're gonna win it they're not gonna want to at least from me, I wouldn't want to negotiate with somebody and try to give them money when I know I'm going to get it. I'm just going to try to steamroll over them so they might start deleting things. It's possible that it'll turn out that um, that it, it's not going to work out for us to, to have a mechanic like that, but so far I haven't heard anything to say that, that that's going to be taken away during that phase. Uh, you know, it may It may not be there, though. I, you may be completely right and people are going to do that but at the same time I think it's almost a viable option for people to try to ruin it and say you know either you give us two million credits and you can have it intact or we're going to delete everything and then you're going to have to you know drop everything anyway so you might as well just save yourself some money in the long run so I mean leaving that in provides another gotcha. diplomatic option a threat type thing that, that you can sort of use so I don't know it's going to depend on, on metrics testing that kind of stuff I know, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that still depend on, on metrics and feedback and testing and things, and it's just one of those things until we um, until we see a lot of this coming back from testers and going, okay, well, this is a bad mechanic, or you know, this needs to be tweaked a little bit this way or that way. Um, it, it's hard to set everything in stone, uh, but you know, we're we're trying to get a good uh, baseline nailed down that we can code into the game and then we can get people in there and testing it and then once we do that we'll be able to say okay you know, this is absolutely the way it is or this is getting changed and this is the way it is so it's going to depend on a lot of on a lot of factors as we go through good how's the questions looking are we all done there yeah i think we're caught up yeah okay all right. Uh, well, I want to thank Kayletta for coming on the show. I appreciate all that you shared with us. And uh, Well, thank you for having me. I, I have fun sitting down and chatting with you guys, so this has just been another good experience. Yes. And uh, if you need more information about the Repop, you can uh, reach them or find them at uh, therepopulation.com, as well as uh, information about Dermot Hoth at uh, dermothothclan.com. And uh, anything, last words before we end the show, anybody? i like to say thanks, you know, once again to Kayletta and the uh, repopulation staff that did join us tonight. That really yeah, they're shows like, half of them are here. Yeah, that really shows that you guys are listening to the community and you want to put out a good product, and we appreciate that. 
Well, and you know what? We appreciate our fans. We appreciate the guilds that are backing us. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to come on here and do this to show to show you guys, show the guilds and the fans and stuff that not only are, are we asking you to back us, but we're willing to sit down and we're willing to back you guys up too. So it, it's sort of a, um, a, a cycle there. And we really do appreciate you guys and all the things that you do and how much information you, you're trying to get out on the game and stuff. So it's a lot of fun for me to sit down with you guys and, and chat like this. And I would love to come do it again sometime. Thank you very much for coming out. And I guess I also should mention, um, as far as uh, republishing this, anyone who's watching it, uh, news organizations, anybody, feel free to, to re-kick this back out and, and get the word out about the repopulation. Uh, so at the end of the show, there'll be a little bit of uh, uh, end credits, and uh, I'll, I'll end the, uh, trans uh, the uh, Twitch, and uh, we'll come back and talk to you. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha.